Welcome to the Bethan Law Firm's continuing video education series. Today's topic is non-competition agreements. Hello, my name is Joseph Lawrence and I'm a senior attorney at the Bethan Law Firm. I head our appellate division and today I'm going to talk about an issue that is frequently litigated before Texas's Courts of Appeals and the Texas Supreme Court and that issue is covenants not to compete. Covenants not to compete are enforceable in Texas if they meet certain requirements. And I like to boil down those requirements to four touchstones, summarized as contract, consideration, protectable interest, and reasonable restrictions. So what does that mean? Well, let me start with contracts. In order to enforce an employee's promise not to compete, that promise has to be part of an existing contract or ancillary, meaning related to an existing contract. It is common to have written employment contracts in Texas, and often non-competes are written right into those written agreements, but not always. Sometimes the non-compete is contained in a separate agreement. As long as that agreement is related to the employment contract, it will be enforceable, at least as that requirement. The second category is consideration, and that just means what is the employer going to give to the employee uh, in exchange for the employee's promise not to compete. And Texas courts have talked about uh, many different types of consideration that is acceptable. For example, one of the most common is access to confidential information or trade secrets. For example, the employer may give the employee access to his customer lists or his pricing strategies. Uh, another type of consideration that's been held valid by Texas courts is specialized training that the employee may not otherwise obtain. Even stock options or an ownership or participatory interest in the business have been held to be valid consideration for a covenant not to compete. That brings me to the fourth, I'm sorry, the third category, which is a protectable interest. That employee's promise not to compete and the consideration given to him has to be related or directed at some protectable interest. If I'm going to give my employee access to my customer identities and my pricing strategies, if I don't have a covenant not to compete from him, he could quit the next day, set up his own business, start calling my customers and offering to undercut my prices by 10 or 15 percent, basically putting me out of business. A covenant not to compete in that instance or the promise of the employee not to compete is directed at protecting that interest which I gave him access to when I gave him access to that confidential information. And that brings me to the final point and that is reasonable restrictions and this is always a big one. Uh, restrictions that are placed on the employee's promise not to compete have to be reasonable as to how long the non-compete will last, what geographic region the non-compete will apply to, and what exactly the employee is uh, prohibited from doing. In other words, how long, where, and what uh, is, is an easy way to summarize it. Typically, Texas courts will approve six month, nine months, one year agreements not to compete. They often also uphold two year restrictions. When you start moving beyond two years, however, the courts look at them more and more closely. The longer the non-compete, the harder the courts can look at it to make sure it's really required to protect the employer's uh, interest. The other area they look at closely is the geographic area that the employee is restricted competing in. For example, if my salesman sells in Harris County and the adjacent counties, a restriction on competing in those counties is going to be held reasonable. But if I say, hey, you can't compete anywhere in the United States or anywhere in Texas, well, of course, going to look at that real closely and likely hold that's not reasonable. Finally, it's what activity is the employee restricted from uh, uh, competing in. Suppose I sell widgets. A reasonable restriction there is the employee can't sell widgets. Well, what if I sell widgets and watch them call it? but all the employee does is sell widgets. A restriction that says he can't compete by selling widgets or watching the calls in that case is probably unreasonably broad because he has nothing to do with the watching the call it side of the business. So what happens if you get into litigation and the court decides well these restrictions are unreasonably broad? Does that mean your covenant not to compete is unenforceable? No. Under Texas law the court is required 
to rewrite the restrictions so that they are reasonable. There are a few penalties there, though. You don't get off scot-free. If the court rewrites the covenant not to compete, then you as the employer are going to lose any damages that you can prove that were caused by the employees keep competing up to the day the uh, court rewrote the restrictions. So what is the uh, lesson learned from that? The lesson learned is don't be greedy. Keep your restrictions reasonable. All too often employers make their restrictions a little broader than they need to be and the court ends up rewriting them and the employer loses money as a result. Thank you for taking this time to listen to me. I hope that this uh, was helpful. Thank you for your time today and remember at the Vethan Law Firm your problem is our business.